Hey guys, so today we're going to be installing a uh, NZXT Kraken G12 GPU cooler along with a Corsair H75 to my Asus uh, Turbo 1080 Ti. So it's installed in my media PC, which is that one down at the bottom, which is a Silverstone GD09. And being a uh, factory sort of style cooler, it does get quite noisy and for a media PC I want to keep it pretty sleek and quiet so it's not really what I want. Um, temperature wise it's not too bad, I'm not really too phased about the temperature, I'm really just trying to make this thing a little bit quieter. So we're going to be installing the cooler and hopefully that brings the temperatures down and keeps that fan nice and low and cool. So as a baseline um, it idles at about 36 degrees and then what we're going to be doing is running in the factory OC mode on the ASUS uh, overclocking software and run some 3D Mark Fire Strike and get a benchmark for temperatures and clock speeds and just a bit of other information. Then I'm going to fit the cooler and we'll test it out and see what difference it made. Okay, so we did the time spy test and we got a score of 7,757, which is not too bad. See the results down there. Uh, the score is quite low because my CPU is pretty, pretty average for the graphics card being used, but still works pretty good. And our, our clock speed got to a total of 1924, uh, memory 11088. GPU temperature 84, which is pretty tasty, and fan speed got to a max of 51. Um, now, because the test is quite short, it doesn't really crank up the fans too much, so what I'm going to do is just chuck on a game and we'll get those fans really going. And I'll show you, hopefully, on film how loud they are. Okay, so I just ran Unigen Superposition benchmark, which is a 4K benchmark. And these are my results. So now we'll install the cooler and see if we get any better thermals. Okay, so I've taken the GPU out of the computer and separated the halves of it. So um, pretty straightforward. You just take all the little screws out, four screws that surround the actual uh, CPU or GPU cooler and also the front or rear plate so pretty simple and then it just kind of just wiggle it a little bit until it separates it's just stuck with the uh, thermal pads and a bit of the grease and then there's two connectors there's a RGB header and a fan header so pretty simple so this is just a close-up of the board So now I'm just going to clean it up with a bit of uh, alcohol and some paper towel and I watched a video on one of these installs and the guy had some troubles with thermals and he narrowed it down to that the um, CPU cooler didn't have enough thermal grease on it from factory. Um, so I've got this Noctua NTH1 which is quite a real uh, pretty good thermal compound so I'm going to clean it off the CPU cooler and apply this you know, quite liberally because this is non-conductive and uh, GPUs love a bit of thermal grease as you can see the factory applied is spread over as well this is the factory cooler thermal pads fan there yeah, it's pretty basic so yeah now uh, mount it up as per the instructions and show the end result in the case. Okay, so it's all mounted. Hopefully, fingers crossed it works first go. So uh, I had to relocate a fair few things in the case um, to get it to fit. I had to move the SSD because that used to be where the cooler is now. So it just fits in. So that's a push-pull, uh, 75. Pretty tight against all the power supply stuff, but it fits. Uh, the case is pretty messy, I know. 
This is only a uh, Mini ITX board or Micro ATX Mini ITX, I think. So it only has one fan header other than the CPU fan header. So I had to use a fan splitter for everything. Uh, the pump plugs straight into the motherboard fan header, one and only. So that goes underneath and then runs down the front to the fan header. Quite tight. So mounting it was uh, relatively straightforward. Just uh, put the brackets on the GPU and then tighten that up. Just had to go down, inch it down really slowly at first. I thought I'd inch it down pretty evenly and then I had a look and it was on an angle a little bit. So now it's uh, pretty flat. Uh, yeah, you don't do them on with a screwdriver, just with fingers and even then not super tight. Uh, because they, there's no heat spreader on a GPU, so if you crank it up too hard, you'll uh, crack it, which would not be good on a 1080 Ti. Uh, other than that, it's all pretty straightforward, so uh, yeah, let's plug it in and hopefully it works. Okay, so it's all back together again and running, and I'm pleased to say the results are absolutely awesome. They're a lot better than I expected. So on this benchmark before I was getting about 84 degrees max and now I'm getting 40. Uh, this is the second time I've run it now so I'm trying to load her up and so it's just hit 41 which is you know a good 50% uh, deduction which is quite amazing. So, uh, I installed it first and I was not getting this, I was getting about 70 degrees, so almost similar to what it was and uh, it just didn't seem right, the, the radiator was getting really hot I just thought that doesn't seem right, so uh, I took it apart again and all seemed good, so I couldn't really find anything wrong and then when I was installing it again, I realised my mistake. So. This is a push-pull radiator, and it's now well, warmish before it was quite hot, like probably 85, 90 degrees, which is not too great. And then I found out that I had them both pushing each into each other. So uh, this one was pushing this way, this one was pushing this way. So uh, that would not work too well. So now they're set up correctly. So this one's going towards, and that one is going away. So it's pulling it through the cooler, and uh, yeah, the results speak for itself, so just a stupid mistake. That's what you get when it's uh, 11 o'clock at night, and you've had about three hours sleep, so. So almost 45 degrees now. So it's a massive improvement, and it's holding that clock pretty well. So yeah, there it is, guys. Uh, I think in 4K, it'll be around the same. This is in 1440p at a full load. It's definitely a deduction and quiet as the loudest part of it is the pump, but once the cover's on, the top cover's on and it's uh, in the cabinet, you don't want to hear anything, so I'm very pleased. And we got our result. 5,824. Okay, so you can see the idle temperature now is about 22 degrees. So that's used to be 37, so that's a huge drop in just idle temperatures. Well, that means a lot, but something to take into consideration. So I have it in the same overclock mode. I haven't touched the boost or volts or anything. So now we're going to run the same um, benchmarks as before and see if the score and the clock and all that has improved and also keep an eye on the temperatures. Okay, so the 4K results for Supervision benchmark uh, on here. So I think we've got 86, 85 last time. So that's a huge improvement uh, without actually doing anything, just managing the cooling. So I haven't changed the clock or anything, it's just GPU boost doing its thing because it's operating in a lot cooler temperature. So before I think we had a minimum of 32 and a max of 84. So now we've got 22 and 44. Um, about two more frames higher, I think we had 83 frames last time and uh, yeah all in all so far so good I mean 
This is awesome. The temperature is just crazy. So good. All right, now for the next benchmark. So we've got an increase in time spy as well. So before our score was 7747, I believe. And now it's 7975, so it's a huge increase. Uh, clock speed stays pretty stable as well, as you can see. The temperature is very low. Um, hovers around the 40s, doesn't go any higher than 40. And idle temperature is coming back down. I only just finished the test. So a huge increase. I have not done any other overclocking. It's the exact same, it's just cooler. So, got an increase in performance from the card by almost doing nothing. So there you have it, guys. I mean, it's it's pretty cheap. The bracket's only forty nine dollars, fifty dollars Australian, and then the CPU cooler itself uh, was one hundred and thirty dollars or something like that. So for just under two hundred dollars um, Australian, which is about you know one sixty, one fifty US. It's you can't beat it to put a water block on it and radiator and pump and res and everything. It's just you're wasting your time. You may as well get an AIO for your graphics card, AIO for your CPU. It's easy, it's cheap, and it works really, really well as you can see. It's value for money. So, thanks for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you later.